All right. So we've been talking about uh, faith and the people whose faith has been mentioned in the book of Hebrews and the fact that faith is what has pleased God and God is talking about it. We were looking at the life of Abraham just before we closed and we said that it really takes faith to go where God is leading us um, and to believe in the promise. In this case, it was not just him, but we noticed that Isaac and Jacob, they also lived in tents because they were moving towards the place that God wanted for them. And they were waiting for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So uh, talking about the promised land, not just the physical promised land which they would inherit. Now we know that people of the Old Testament, they don't have this kind of revelation which we have through the logos or the revealed word of God. But still, in their spirit, it is possible that they had an idea that someday there will be the city of our God, which is their ultimate promised land. And uh, they looked forward to it. So was it a loss that Abraham never really inherited? Now we know that the, the borders, the boundaries which were promised to Abraham is actually uh, Israel, okay, the children of Israel. Their land is Israel. But did Abraham possess it and occupy it and thrive in that uh, land when he was alive? Not really. Okay. Similarly, you don't read so much about Isaac and Jacob possessing the land as well. But their descendants, descendants moved towards it. But how did they die? They died in faith and their expectation was more than the physical land, but a spiritual city whose builder and maker is God. Okay, when the culmination of things happens, we know that we are going to enjoy our time in um, the city that God makes for us. And that's what they were looking forward to. So that's a little bit about their faith and uh, you know how that inspires us. Sarah is the next person here. What about Sarah? Was she uh, painted as a perfect person? Not really. Because when you see her response to the promise of God, we are told that she laughed. When she was told that she's going to bear a child in her old age, she was caught laughing. And then the angel tells her, by next year, around this time, you will have that child. How beautiful God has included her in this list of people of faith. So we are told Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age. So that gives us confidence. It shows us that if God has a plan for us, we can, we may not even feel strong either through physical age or, you know, some other, some other um, weariness that, that we have, we may think, how am I going to believe that God can do this? You have to first receive a seed to give birth to something, isn't it? So that seed is the promise of God's word. We may feel that we are not strong enough to receive that promise, but Sarah received strength to conceive seed. Even the strength to believe that promise of God, get it into your spirit, let it grow, and then give birth to the promise of God. It's possible by faith. And in the physical, we have seen Sarah do it at her old age, to be 90. 90 is what people estimate her uh, age. At 90, have you heard any woman bearing a child? Rare. Isn't it? But by faith, the impossible was made possible. And that is inspiring for us today. We can do it through faith. Even when we may feel that I'm worn out, God can give us that promise and we can uh, bear that child. And 
her attitude towards god you know she understood who god is she recognized that my body may be uh, old but isn't it god who created my body doesn't he know when he has promised doesn't he know that he can help me to bear a child so no wonder he has made the promise so she judged him faithful if god said it he knows what he's talking about so i am just going to believe him it will happen and it happened so she counted him faithful the one who had promised therefore wow one believing couple what did god do one man him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude innumerable as the sand which is by the sea shore so abraham's faith sarah's faith the journey began with one isaac but god had promised him if you go back genesis 12 genesis 15 you see the journey of abraham you see that god told him your descendants will be countless and it's true today physically there are you know thousands of descendants that have lived on the face of the earth you know uh, uh, abraham's descendants but even spiritually we know that the believers are the descendants of abraham so aren't they new innumerable aren't they so many it's true and god has done it through a believing couple in their so called impossible situation so today if we believe god even the impossible is possible okay now talking about all these people abraham isaac and jacob i told us that they were living in tents they never really stepped into the or possessed the promised land but they died in faith okay uh, not having received the promises you know sometimes that is the case there are people who have gone ahead of us god laid a promise on their hearts but the thing is you see they believed god and that is what is important maybe that promise was not meant to be received by an individual but by some generations put together okay so some promises are like that but those who had faith in god you know they have left behind a good example for us so when you look at people like abraham isaac jacob and all uh something special how did they treat the promise of god they saw them from afar off so it's talking about spiritual senses today when we think about the promise of god for us are you able to see it when you're praying when you close your eyes in your spirit can you see that it's going to be fulfilled if not then we really have to you know uh, pray and let that build in our spirit man and be able to perceive the promise fulfilled you know that's what faith is faith is a substance it's a reality inside of us so these people they saw it it is coming one day it is coming so they were sure of that one is they saw it second they were assured of them so they were confident they knew god would do it they embrace them embrace them is to um again you you're saying i fully given myself to this promise i know that god will do it okay, so you fully receive it in other words they received they embraced them they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth so their confession was in line with what their confession was in line with the faith because they believed god will give us a good land he will give a great land to our descendants say so so they spoke it so these are all ways in which we can um, express our faith we see the promise we uh, are assured of the promise we uh, embrace the promise we confess the promise okay? and it takes faith to move in in this kind of a way and you know uh, if at all they had not trusted god's promise and looked ahead we are told that they too could have become discouraged now what is the message to these believers who are listening the hebrew uh, believers 
the message is don't be discouraged if you are discouraged and if you turn back then what is what is the problem you might get tempted to go back you might get tempted to give up on what god has spoken but these people they did not give up so again an encouragement is look ahead and not behind if you keep looking ahead and and trusting in god you know you will move forward and god was so happy to be known as a god of such people of faith that you know god himself prepares a city for them so dev i saw one comment here uh, which you have posted i didn't understand you said he did not die uh, what did you mean is that a question it was about enoch ma'am the questions you asked okay it was about enoch is it okay at that time you posted it okay i understood yeah so uh, abraham and this sons we saw that now let's continue to see more uh, lives of people mentioned mm, isaac okay isaac he did something by faith what was that he blessed his son so in the uh, generation at that time they had this practice of before dying passing on you know blessing the the children so isaac blessed but by faith isaac it says so what happened if you see the way the names have been written it is bless jacob and esau concerning the things to come looking at the lives we understand that isaac loved esau okay and it was uh, the mother um, rebecca who liked jacob and was doing things for jacob when the time for blessing came isaac wanted to bless esau but we know what happened you know jacob deceived and he went in and uh, isaac couldn't see very well so the blessing which was meant to be taken by esau went on to jacob so in a way you know there is an element of faith here if isaac wanted to do things the way he pleased the blessing should have been given to esau but the blessings went off to jacob so it's really an act of faith maybe uh, isaac would have prayed and said lord this is what i want to do i want to bless esau and uh, i want him to be the head and you know i want him to be the ruler uh, and i'm going to do this but you help me maybe he submitted it to the lord so when he submitted it to the lord god made things happen according to his purpose even though it looks like oh mistake happened not really god in a way led yes what jacob did was not correct deceiving is not correct but even in those circumstances you know god is a one who can redeem the wrong that the uh, mistakes that humans make as well so definitely jacob is held accountable for the wrong that he does but god shows his goodness in that situation and according to the purposes of god the blessings go to jacob and not esau and that's why it said by faith isaac blessed jacob and esau concerning things to come so the way things unfolded later we know that jacob is the one who became israel and israel is the um, uh, you know the when we talk about abraham's descendants we associate that with the generation of jacob okay so uh, things unfolded in that manner then next by faith jacob what did he do when he was dying he blessed the sons of joseph and worship leaning on the top of his staff they're all carrying on the promise of god till now they have not gone to that city which was promised to abraham so in continuation of the father's faith jacob is not blessed now blessing who he is blessing the sons of joseph because it brought a lot of comfort to jacob 
so he blessed his sons and he knew that god is going to lead these um, you know these these children of mine and strengthen them and uh, surely you know god is going to reveal his glory through my descendants and he worships the lord okay? he worships the lord for god's faithfulness in his life and he leaning on the on top of his staff you see how specific the bible is if you recall going back to genesis 32 i think you know, jacob wrestled with god and um, when he wrestled uh, his hip right his hip um, the angel touched the hip and he started limping from then on that limp also is recorded here that yes he is not a uh, uh, like a you could say the limp you know sometimes people say it just shows that he wasn't perfect okay now there are many wrong things that jacob did but look at god recording the good things from the lives of the people is now you may ask the question wasn't abraham wrong no he lied to uh, abimelech you can say sarah laughed at god's promise you can say oh look at isaac no, he did this and jacob did that and all these people that you are talking about they were sinful people but they were people who at some point in their life you know they gave themselves to god and god's purposes and plans and they continued with that and god has chosen for whatever reason to highlight the good things from their life that came once they had surrendered to him so yes nobody is perfect if we want the best example it's always jesus okay and we will come to that later in the next passage we will come to that but the ultimate example is jesus because he is sinless and perfect but still from the lives of these people we can always learn something joseph is the next person here by faith joseph what did he do he instructed his descendants not to bury him in egypt why because god had promised abraham 400 years later your descendants are going to move out from here and they will move towards the promised land so just think about this generation after generation they are holding on to the promise of god it's going to happen so he tells his children don't bury me in egypt keep my body or the bones you keep my bones when you go to the promised land there you please bury my bones because that is our land this is not our land so what does it take to believe that imagine joseph is going to die now but it's like a prophetic word god has spoken 400 years later we will go to that land so joseph is believing 400 years ahead and telling his descendants take my bones bury it there wow what faith isn't it so no wonder god has recorded that by faith he told his children don't bury me i want to rest on or my physical mortal remains must rest in the promised land of moses what about him by faith when he was born he was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command so is it going to take faith to go against the the uh, rule or the decree in the land yes it was not easy but moses his parents protected him they knew that god had a great destiny for this jewish child and so you know they uh, you know the story you know he is uh, taken to uh, uh, pharaoh's daughter and raised as his son uh, till god equips him to become the deliverer so all this how did it happen through faith first moses his parents were the ones who needed that faith again now that same faith in moses um when he grew up we you know that he refused to be in the pharaoh's palace and continue he wanted to deliver 
his own people so that also shows that he was aware of his identity he was aware of his identity and um, uh, that he had committed himself to the purposes of god so it takes a lot of courage to reject the world okay in other words you can say that by faith moses rejected the pleasures of this world so he could have lived like a king had a great life had a lot of servants everything but what did he choose by faith he chose the plan of god was it easy it was not easy you know he had to go um uh, he go face pharaoh uh, take the children out of uh, egypt uh so many miracles that that he needed to walk through uh, lead the people through tough times easy no worth it definitely yes because he full he walked in the purposes of god so it took faith on the part of moses and uh, yeah he also had you know the sense that he needed to endure um so that he can accomplish what god told him to do 28 verse 28 here uh, by faith he kept the passover and sprinkling of blood uh, lest he who destroyed the first born should touch him again you know to follow every instruction of god noah when he was told okay it has going to be rain and flood you build an ark he has not seen these things but he believed now think about moses everyone is dying uh, especially the first born they are going to die in the uh, the plague that is going to affect them so when god told them that you must celebrate the passover and take the blood you know put it on the put it on the door post and all that it took faith now moses could have questioned and said are you sure god what if i do it and people still die but moses believed god and he said okay lord you are telling me to do this i know that you are going to protect our children he instructed the people they did it they were safe and they were ready to move out of egypt so he went by faith by faith it is said that the israelites they went through the red sea as by dry land whereas the egyptians attempting to do so were drowned you know uh, sometimes we ask the question how how was that miracle possible when the waters were standing up we those of us who have seen the movie and all uh, <coughs> we see that the egyptians try to come they are like okay the waters are still standing we will also escape but there was a different dynamic acting for the israelites and for the egyptians what is that the israelites carried faith and that is why they were able to cross through the red sea so you just apply it you know everything that we are reading about we can apply it in our own lives and today maybe it's some challenging circumstances that we are walking through our friends people who don't believe might say it will never happen you will never be able to make it or you'll never be able to clear your exams or you know you'll never be able to clear the interview but just think about this passage the red sea god's people were able to clear, go through because of faith and the ones who did not believe they drowned so keep the faith alive through faith we can pass through many things you know uh, of course based on the way god is leading us it's not to say that you can do whatever you like no but when god has a purpose we can walk through it but it's going to take faith to cross our red seas it's also going to take faith to make the jericho wall fall down we have many jericho walls in our lives isn't it uh we have uh, challenges financially it's like a wall we have health challenges it's like a wall we have relational issues with people it's like a wall it stops us from moving forward 
towards the promises of God. Now, how do I get this wall to fall down? One element, of course, is faith. Now, the Joshua, when he led the people, they went round the wall seven times. And obviously, it needed faith, isn't it? It was so foolish. Those who looked at them were wondering, what are these people doing? But that's how God's instruction is. When we listen to God's instruction, we have to be faithful to that. And uh, maybe God might say, okay, I need you to speak God's word. Then the wall will crash. Okay, speak it. Wall will crash. Or I need you to praise, like Jehoshaphat. You praise and you go into battle. The wall will crash. So I just do that. How? By faith. So I need faith to see my walls crashing down. Take God's instruction by faith and the walls will come down. There is a mention of Rahab also. Okay, Rahab, um, a sinful woman, she is known as a harlot or a, a prostitute. But she is included here because of her act of faith. She was from a different community. Uh, but included into this, in, into the, you could say, family of faith. Why? Because of her uh, reverence for God. So when she recognized these spies believe in this God and I, I fear this God and I believe in this God, she was ready to give them protection. So it was because of her faith in God that she did what she did, even though you know, she was known as a sinful woman uh, of those days. And we know that you know, she's somebody who then got included into the community of faith. What did she do? She protected the spies and um, later on, you know, she, um, if you know the story, she hung that some scarlet uh, outside her window and when the walls crashed they were protected okay uh, so, but then what is that you can again look at that uh, red scarlet hanging outside Rahab's house and it's like the blood of Jesus isn't it it's like the blood of Jesus it's like the Passover uh, blood of the lamb that protected the people and it protected Rahab and her household her faith protected her uh, in the midst of dangers around her and so today also we can trust God okay God I believe in you there are lots of dangers but you will protect me Rahab's house stood when all the other houses crashed so by faith this can happen now there are so many people like this by faith they they um, saw God's purposes accomplished. There's a mention of Gideon. You remember Gideon? He thinks that he is a very weak and a fearful individual. But God calls him mighty man of valor. And we know that you know he won the battle that he fought against his uh, enemies. And in the same way, you know, there is uh, Barak. Barak is he is a general, uh, like an army general, but he teams up with Deborah. Deborah encourages him and he goes and fights a battle and he wins the battle. So basically what we are told here is people who have accomplished anything for God, anything that is counted as an accomplishment in the kingdom of God, it is done by faith. So that's the point. So these people won battles. Samson, Samson also won a lot of battles. Jephthah, you know, Jephthah also uh, is a person who defeated the Ammonites. Okay, and then there's the mention of David. David is, you know, he was a king. He was a warrior. Um, Samuel, Samuel is a prophet. So uh, Samuel, it was a journey of faith. You know, it takes faith to hear from God and guide God's people. So these are all examples of faith. Now, are we saying that these people are perfect because suddenly looking at Samson's name again, you wonder, oh, here's a man who did not have control on his flesh. So what we would say is when you study, you know, it's like character study or individuals, we study them in the Bible. When you look at a human being, 
we might see weaknesses of their flesh. Take what is uh, good okay, from Samson's life. We know that he, he fought those battles. He was a mighty warrior because of the anointing, because of uh, his faith. Now, we want to follow that part of his life. But the part of his life where he sinned, that is something we want to avoid. Okay, that's why I told us Jesus is the best example. You can follow everything about the life of uh, Jesus and his character. But other human beings, no, we can't do that. We really have to examine their life. Even David, people might look at his life and say, oh, what kind of a, a king was he? No, he um, uh, fell into adultery with Bathsheba. Yeah, that part is wrong. So we don't want to follow the weaknesses of the flesh of human beings instead their faith now if you look at the faith accomplishments of david there are so many battles that he won starting with the the battle with goliath you remember and nobody thought david was a warrior god brought him on the scene and he killed a giant okay so it started there and many victories and uh, you know he'd set up the tabernacle of worship so from the life of david you you see uh, all these things accomplished through faith so in this manner there are so many people now there are mention of names okay why are we talking about these people basically the discouraged believers are being encouraged and said look there have been so many people who have lived by faith so it's not like they didn't go through challenges. They went through battles. They went through struggles. They went through delay, delays. You know, they, they went through so many things. But don't you think they have walked in the purposes of God by faith? So why are you giving up? Don't give up. That's the point. That's the reason he's talking about all these people. And again, he encourages them. I've mentioned names, but there are so many others also who have subdued kingdoms. Subdued kingdoms is overcome. You know, enemies who come, enemy kingdoms, you overcome them. So there are so many such people. You could say Joshua is a great example. And then there are all those kings, Asa, Jehoshaphat, Hezekiah, Josiah. So these are kings who were victorious. Uh, we are told that there are people who work righteousness. Okay, so uh, righteous kings that you can look at, prophets you can look at who stood by God's word. You know, think about Elijah. He challenged. He challenged the standards of his times. Uh, he challenged the the uh, you know the witchcraft and uh, uh, manipulation of, of Jezebel and Ahab during those times. And he brought the kingdom of God. So you, there are people who have stood in righteousness in, in difficult times. There are those who have obtained God's promises. Now, again, if you look back, ev almost everybody here in uh, has obtained God's promises you have uh, caleb caleb's name is not mentioned isn't it uh, he was told that he will get a mountain but he held on at the age of 80 he went and he said i, I i'm still as strong as i was 40 years ago give me my mountain it takes faith to receive the promises of god so we have to learn from the examples of such people. Stop the mouth of lions. So there are certain uh, examples like Daniel. Think about that. He is a man of prayer. He's a man given to holiness. He was a man given to um, the pursuit of God. And from the life of Daniel, what do you learn? You really learn, uh, even when he was thrown into the lion's den, the angels came and they shut the mouth of lions. And, you know, later on, again, in battle, you see that David took on lions and David's mighty men took on lions. How did they do that? How can you survive in the midst of lions? Or today, you might interpret it as in a uh, when, when people are ready to get you. How can you still be safe in a situation like that? Faith. When you're walking by faith, okay, God is there, God is for me, you're able to uh, come out safely. Quench the violence of fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember, 
they were put in the fire and there was a fourth man in the fire which is you know we we believe that it it was uh, jesus they were protected how how can you walk how can you get into the fire and not be burned faith okay the situation came not that we go into fire no that's not the point when these things unfold in the midst of these uh, persecutions god is with us he will help us then escape the edge of the sword or dangers you know any uh, attacks that come our way they escaped it like you could say david goliath came charging at him but they would escape it was goliath who died you know, jezebel came against uh, elijah but god protected him so they escaped from death and out of weakness were made strong okay one example is we've already seen sarah initially she struggled to believe but god gave her she received strength by faith so from their weakness they became strong you know gideon gideon thought i can't do anything lord but he got the strength and he actually fought the battles so things like that a esther esther was not even interested she was just happy with her own life uh, she had now received a beautiful opportunity to be in the king's uh, palace and enjoy it but she when challenged you know god that strength came and she also fasted and prayed you know god gave her that strength to um go ahead and uh, uh, do what god wanted her to do that is bring deliverance to the people so people like that became valiant in battle you know you could mention names like david gideon barak all these people again turn to flight the armies of the uh, aliens women received their dead raised to life again so there are certain examples of you know such women if you go back to uh, the uh, books go back to elijah elisha's life the widow of zarafat shunamite woman remember they had the sons who died and these prophets raised them from the dead so these are all examples how did they do it they did it by faith now this is the next part of this passage till now we saw victorious uh, accomplishments but from verse 35 the second part of it you see that there are some people who have not seen the outcome and or rather the outcome did not look like a victory but whatever they went through they still went through by faith so there were some who were tortured some not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection so there were people who went through persecutions and struggles you know if you again look back at the book of acts you will ask the question <coughs> herod he killed james but peter survived so what about james where is james faith there are some who have been through what about stephen if he was a man of faith why did he die there are some king scourgings uh, imprisonment chains even they are counted as people of faith though they did not come out uh, so called victorious there were people who were stoned there were people who were cut in two or sawn in two tempted slain by the sword the people who tried to escape you know they wandered in sheep skins goat skins being destitute afflicted tormented the world did not think that they are worthy okay, there are people who have wandered in deserts and mountains dens caves of the earth but it's not about the perception of man now man might not give a badge and say you are a person of faith but god has seen even such people who have borne difficulty and though it doesn't look very victorious for us god knows the heart you know that's what we see isn't it Why, when david was chosen um, god sees the heart man sees the outward appearance but god sees the heart so god sees the faith 
and God is the one who rewards these people. And so we are told, you know, all these people, they have received a good testimony through the faith. Um, they did not receive the promise, this last bunch, they did not receive the promise, but even their struggles are something that, you know, they recognize that one part they have to do. And together with us is what the fulfillment of the promise will look like. So God having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. So, you know, there are certain promises of God which may require more than one person's lifetime. You know, if you take, for example, let's say the freedom of a land. Okay, uh, you you might have uh, some people who are engaging in free, freedom struggle. Now that generation struggles and they die. The next generation might be the ones who actually receive that freedom. But it's together with this generation that the promise is fulfilled. So there are two generations that are needed to see the fulfillment of the promise. So just because you saw one generation struggle, it doesn't mean that God is not faithful to his promise. God is faithful, but it's going to take this generation and another generation. Similarly, look at Abraham. Many generations of faith till you see them occupy the land which God has promised. So it's like that. So now I told us, you can look at the lives of human beings and be so inspired. So uh, just want to know if uh, you're feeling inspired by what we have studied today. Anyone? Okay, great. Aaron says yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we are charged up and every time. Uh, personally, for me also, when I look at uh, Hebrews chapter 11, I'm so... Uh, encouraged. Now Hebrews 12 is that perfection. We are inspired by Hebrews 11, by the lives of regular human beings. Hebrews 12 talks about the Lord Jesus and it says, listen, you discouraged believer, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Who are these witnesses? All these names you saw now, Abraham, Sarah, Jacob, Isaac, all those and many whose names are not mentioned, but they have made it. They are looking at us. They are looking whether we are going to make it uh, in our faith journey. So basically the believer is told, come on, now you focus. How to focus? Lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. So, you know, when somebody is part of a running race, they will try to be as light as possible. You don't see them wearing, uh, uh, you know, like a traditional kurta or a suit or uh, even a sari because it's difficult to run with, with a, you know, like, like a heavy, heavy outfit. And... You try to reduce. If you look at people who are participating in Olympics, you know, they might even go to the extent of buying the lightest shoes and the you know some scientific clothes because the weight is very light and you can cut through the air faster uh, so that you can win the gold medal. So when there is weight, it reduces our speed. What is the weight in a believer's life? Sin. When we have sin it slows us down. And of course, you know, Jesus talked about uh, the influences of the world. So you have a pride, of, a lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life, the worries of this life. What is happening? All these things are making our run slower because it's heavy. It's heavy on us. So basically we are told, oh believer, don't get discouraged. Keep the focus. Get rid of the weights. You know, put your trust in the Lord. Overcome your fear, anxiety, and uh, run with endurance. What is run with endurance? I already told you. For a short race, it's easy. Quick. We can make it. But life is what? It's a long journey. The 
race of faith is what it's a long journey and whenever something is long you need endurance have you ever traveled in a train uh, where it takes 3 days or something to i think maximum i have only done like 2 days or 2 and a half days in a train by the end of the first day um uh, you're thinking when is the station going to come when is it going it takes lot of endurance right to just finish the journey so he's saying the race of faith is like that you need some endurance don't give up the station will come but you have to keep the faith okay and uh, walk in righteousness and so he says you know how you can be encouraged look at jesus he is the author and the finisher of our faith you know why because think about his life he endured the cross now we talked about a long race and a strange journey all that is easy comparatively but how about the cross you live your entire life to die on the cross and then you're actually on the cross that's so difficult and painful and jesus actually did it he never thought you know of the shame despising the shame it was told that to die on a tree is like a curse he said okay i will do it why did he do it the key thing is for the joy set before him so you know when we go through a difficulty we go through it because we know that something is coming out of it you know when we write our exams it's some exams very hard we study so hard no sleep um lot of pressures but why because if i clear this exam then i will get a certificate i will get a degree that will help me get a job so there is something on the other side of your struggle jesus also struggled because of his love for us he knew that we will be forgiven of our sin and so the joy that was set before him that was one reason but what was the other reason the other reason is if i finish my responsibility then the father will say okay well done you know uh, not just good and faithful servant in the case of jesus but my son you know well done son you have done a great job and uh, thankfully you know jesus actually did it and now he sat at the right hand of the throne of god so when jesus can bear so much of pain basically what he's telling the believers is what you are going through is nothing we will all never be able to compare to the pain that jesus has gone through so whether you are a pastor or whether you are a leader whether you are a student a housewife anything anything whatever each one of us are in our journey of faith let us draw our inspiration yes from all the others in the in the list of faith but mainly from jesus because we can never compare with the endurance that he had and so don't let anything discourage us okay so let's stop here we run out of time uh, i think i'll quickly wrap this up only a small passage left in hebrews 13 we'll quickly wrap it up next class and we'll uh, i'm thinking we won't do james we will do maybe first and second peter first and then we will come back uh, to james okay so if you can please start reading first peter okay let's close with the word of prayer mm, anyone uh, if you can uh, pray please uh, how about dev Dave, can you close in prayer? Yeah. Yeah. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you that we are able to study from the Word of God, Lord Jesus. We thank you that we see what faith is through the Book of Hebrews, Lord Jesus. We thank you that there are so many of these great men. and who have set an example for each one of us set an set an set a model for for all of us Lord Jesus we thank you for those and their faith Lord Jesus help each one of us to be to have faith like this Lord Jesus to to step in in faith and in courage Lord Jesus for you and your kingdom Lord Jesus we thank you once again Lord Jesus and we pray that that you bless each one of us Lord, who are in the class and who are who were not able to join yet Lord we pray that they may come to join next for the next classes so we thank you and we 
And we ask you to bless our day in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, thank you, everyone. God bless you. And uh, I'll connect with you in the next class. Okay, have a great week. Bye for now.